Hi, welcome to another edition of Mama Boards by AppsFlyer. My name is Noam Gohari and I'm Director of Product at Playtica. Playtica is one of the leading gaming company with multiple games in the top grossing charts in the US and worldwide. Today we will be talking about getting more from your data and how to use your links correctly. So, when you talk about data, data is the most important thing within our industry today. Everyone is talking about, about big data, everyone is talking about how to do it correctly and all the challenges around it. So, the main cost and the main reason we have an issue is that you have multiple traffic sources, you have multiple tra tra trackers, same as AppsFlyer and any other tracker you might be using, and you have your own database, and the data flow is very, very different and it's very, very complex. So to do things correctly, you have to do it smart, and I believe that it's one of the biggest challenges for most companies. The first thing that has to happen is actually the links. The links is the first thing that connects the traffic source to your tracker. If things are wrong there, your entire flow will be wrong, and then there is no way any of your engineers or you yourself can actually make sense of the data and do it, make it work correctly. So when we're talking about different traffic sources, the main thing that you need to remember is that different partners, there is different data, and there are different macros. It's something that is very important to understand. The basis of what we do is the links. And the way we use the links is we actually add the macros into the links. So you need to know what's your partners, you need to know how, what they have, what macros they have, and what's available for you to use. But it's very important to remember that we need to keep things organized and we need to keep things flowing in between different partners as well. So it cannot be the wild, wild west, which is usually the case with a lot of links, with a lot of companies. What you need to do is you need to stabilize everything. You need to be able to decide up front with all of your team, with everyone that's doing media buying, if it's your agencies, if it's your media buyers, you must be able to remember that you've decided on a structure and this structure needs to be throughout the entire industry, the entire teams and everyone that's working with you. Once you, use, once you use a partner, you actually have to do something very, very important. Don't ask them to use your links and don't let them set the links themselves. Once, one of the most important thing is to actually talk to them and try to understand what's the available macros. When you talk to them and you have what's the available macros, you need to remember that different partners will actually have macros for keywords, for placements, site IDs, etc. And this is why it's important to understand what's available for you and how can you put it into the links in the right way. Do not change the placement of specific macros in the links, in between links. It's very important to understand that once you put something in, it doesn't have to have the same name, it has to have the same meaning. You have to be able to understand what is your sub-parameter levels or what are your site levels, and if there are different games in between different partners, you need to know how to actually put it correctly in between the links. To make things easier for yourself, you have to have one link structure to rule them all, which is very, very important. Take the time to actually set it up correctly. You need to remember that you have different partners, and different partners have different macros, as we said. So the structure of the link needs to be able to accommodate all macros. To be able to do that, you need to remember, before you start running, that the rules of the links have to accommodate different keywords, different site IDs, different placements, and everything has to be in one structure so you don't have mix up in between the macros. You need to remember that even if you set the rules, it has to be a knowledgeable understanding. Don't try to make it hard coded so it's not site ID is this parameter. Whatever is the lower level than the app itself will actually be the lower level. And this is where you need to put the site ID or any other replacement of this specific level. So, you need to remember what is the link structure and how you pass it along into your team. Have it as part of the onboarding. Have all of your agencies make sure that they're all working in the same structure. You need to have a very robust link. The robust link means that it will work with any partner you actually want to work with. It makes no difference who it is. But we need to remember that we always have the sub-parameters. The sub-parameters will be your wild, wild west. This is where you can go crazy. Always use it as last resort. If you have a place for it in the link, use the correct pl place in the link. But there will always be surprises. You always have partners that will need different things and different things to put in the link because it will give you extra data that is very, very important. You can always use the sub-parameters, but make sure that you use it correctly. Even in the sub-parameters, they can be some sort of logic. If you have something that you can set in, set it in and make sure that this specific partner will always use the same sub-parameter 
so you can actually play with the links afterwards. Just to make it clear, most cases you will have a default setting, a default link within your attribution platform or any other platform that you're working with. These links are usually the basics. They are so basic that in most cases they will not give you the data you need. To be able to do that, I'll just show you an example. I looked at the Charboost link and looking at the link within Apps Flyer, this is what you get and you get six different parameters which is great and you can actually work with it, it'll work fine, but when I look at Platica's link, we have 15 different parameters. It's more than double the amount of parameters in the link, which means double the data. Double the data means better analysis, it means more capability of diving into the data and understanding what really doesn't work for you. If you have that set correctly for all of your partners, in most cases, you will have more than 10 parameters in the link, which is very, very important. And again, keep it relevant for the specific parameter and the specific partner's parameter, which is very good for you because you'll be able to dive in. Okay, so we talked a lot about macros and how it should be done. Again, macro is your go-to default, but in a lot of cases we'll have to do hard coding, which a lot of companies do. Hard coding means actually writing something within the parameter, within the link, so it will always come as this specific meaning. A lot of people use it in the campaign names and a lot of things like that in order to chop it down and afterwards actually use it to be able to analyze their data. When we're looking at hard coding, it will always be your last result, as I said, but there are a lot of cases you have to use it. If we're looking at Facebook and if we're looking at a lot of partners that don't allow you to use links, there will always be only one way to get the data through, which will be through the names of the campaigns and everything you're using to be able to cut things and be able to chop it down afterwards. So, if you're doing hard coding, it's very, very important to remember that there are advantages and there are disadvantages that are very, very significant. First of all, the bad thing about hard coding, you can't go back. You can't go back and change the data. You have to do it within the database itself. With macro, if data is actually being changed, because the system is already pulling it from the game itself or from the source itself, it will change automatically. With hard coding, you have to remember how to do it and you have to remember to doing it yourself. A lot of things that are happening with hard coding is actually lowercase and uppercase issues. When you actually use hard coding, you have to write something correctly. When you use uppercase and lowercase, when you analyze the data afterwards and chop it down, it will always be an issue and it will always make changes for you. So please keep it very, very, very strict. Hard coding should be very, very strict for all of your campaigns and all of your working. Breaking the, breaking the link's length. You need to remember when you're using link, there will always be a length capability. If you're using a parameter, it will always have a length capability. The system will usually be able to use macros correctly and compensate on long length and stuff like that. When you're doing it in hard coding, it will pass as is. So make sure you're not doing something too long because there are two options. Either it'll get cut off and then you will not have the data or in worst cases will even give you wrong data because you'll have only partial. Or in other cases, it will just not give you the data at all, which will be even worse because there is no way you can go back and actually compensate on that. So remember to do hard coding very, very strictly and very, very lightly. Do it smart. Talking about the good thing about hard coding, obviously, as we said, there are cases that there is no option to do it. So you can do it when there is no links and nothing you can do about it. In other cases, you will not have macros for what you want. A lot of times it will be the targeting, and a lot of times it will be the cost or a lot of things that you want to use and you want to get the data for, but you don't really have the macros to do it because the partners don't have it. In those cases, we will use hard coding and we will actually put things in the link itself. And this is where it will come as useful and this is, should be the main cases where you will use it. So even when we're doing hard coding, we need to do it correctly, as we said, and there are a lot of things that you need to remember. One of the more important things is what you are allowed to use and what you're not allowed to use. Here you have a few examples of what can actually break a link and what can actually destroy the way you'll get the information. So anything such as hashtags, question marks, and all those things are very, very bad for your link and it's very important to remember it. A lot of them actually have meaning within the browser and within the apps and therefore it, they will be changed once you put it in. Don't use it in the hard coding. You will be able to see them in the macros because the system themselves actually replace them. This is how they know how to replace them because these are things that have a meaning within the code. What you can use will actually be pipes and underscore. These are the main two things you should be able to use. 
Use them to separate things within the naming convention. Use it to separate things within your hard coding to be able to spread it out afterwards and to analyze the data into your specific columns of data. So we talked about two different options we have. We can either do macros or we can do hard coding, but there is an additional option that can allow us to get more out of our links in case we can't do the macros or the hard coding. So what you can do is actually use data enrichment tables. Data enrichment tables technically means that you have a table outside. It can be an Excel, it can be an SQL, and it can allow you to actually connect more data and more information to your regular database. The one thing you're going to have to have when you use table enrichment is actually unique key. Unique key is something that will now allow you to connect the data from your links to the data in your tables. The way you need to do it is to either generate a unique key by yourself or actually use things within your links, within the data you get, to allow yourself to make something unique. The unique thing I would recommend to do is either use your IDFAs together with your campaign ID and your sources ID to allow yourself to create one unique key. It can be generated any way you want, either connecting them or multiplying them with some sort of configuration within your system. So once we have the key, we need to remember the advantages and the problems with the enrichment tables. The advantages obviously will be that you can always go back and change the history. You can always add more columns, you can always add more data, and it's something that will be very easy to do. But the disadvantages is that you have to maintain it. If you don't maintain the table, you cannot have the data correct. So don't go too big, don't go too crazy. An important thing to do is to be able to have everything maintained and have all of your team actually do it correctly. And I'll give you a very good example for it. We actually use this as a test to, to enrich our data for creative testing, okay? So what we did is we actually created an enrichment table with a lot of parameters for creative. We actually matched it at the creative level and we set for every creative its unique ID and hard-coded it into the link. Once we had all the data coming in, we actually matched it into the table and then we could, we could analyze if the background makes any effect, if there is animation, if it's any better, if there is gameplay, there is any better. And that allowed us to understand what we need to do before we even build the bigger system and had the bigger analysis. The thing that was really great about it is that we started with only five different parameters. Once we understood it's working well and we got the big picture, we started diving in. And to be able to dive in, you don't need to rerun. You don't need to have more data. What you need to do is actually add more columns, have more enrichment, because you can always know what you had in the links and what you used. And this has allowed us to actually add 10 at the first run and then 20 different parameters for every different creative and to allow us to dive in to know what's working for us. This was actually what we did before we actually built the full Platica system to allow us to analyze creatives. It is something we still do today. We just do it in a more higher scale and a more complex system. But this is something that is very good and it could be very good for you as well. That's all for today. Feel free to comment below. For more Mama Boards, please click this link. Thank you for joining us.